So we're here, MWC 2022 with Red Hat. Um, Ian, great to see you. Brilliant to be back at a, a show. Yeah, it's awesome to be back with you again, uh, Gabriel, and it's been a couple of years since we all got to be here in person, so it's just wonderful to see everybody again, and uh, great to be with you again as well. Yeah, good stuff. So we want to talk, obviously, about cloud infrastructure for, for telcos and, and, and operators, CSPs. Um, one of the things Red Hat's talked a lot about over the years is the, uh, the importance and the value of having a common cloud platform across core Metro Edge. Um, how's that actually playing out in, in practice, in reality, with, with your operator customers? Well, I think it's starting to play out more and more um, over time, and what we found is that you know, we sort of started on the IT side, getting the cloud platform done there, and then we moved into the LTE world you know, with OpenStack and started down that path for the cloud that way, but now the 5G core has moved to a cloud native world, just like the IT side. Mm -hmm. The next push for that is to push that to the edge for the RAN, and what our customers are finding is that the edge applications they want to run, which is an OT type thing for you know, industrial, they can run that the same way at the edge as they do a networking technology. So it really is trying to, to play out that way. And I guess one of the things, is quite, um, it's, in some ways it's been quite quiet, but quite incredible really how quickly mobile core has moved to cloud and 5G core has moved to, as it were, cloud native and so forth. Um, that, that, that train's kind of set, I, I guess you could say. I guess we're, well, yeah, so that, that train is, you know, we've, as I said, we kind of went through the whole LTE core piece first, and then for the last, you know, I'd say two, almost three years, we've been tuning, if you will, the 5G core in a cloud native way, and now we actually have that in production in a number of places around the world. So that's kind of, as you say, set, right? But where we're headed next, of course, is to expand that to the edge and take that same approach for the RAN applications, which are much harder to actually go cloud native, because now I've got to go deal with performance, hardware, those kind of things. But that's sort of the next evolution where our partners on the network side will make their RAN applications cloud native, and to make that same extension, so now the entire highway is cloud native. So VRAN, where, where would you judge the state of VRAN? Um, first of all, technology development, but then we can maybe talk about product ready and deployment ready, but, but where, where, where are we at? Um, so we're still, in the early phases of it, especially for 5G, because a lot of the effort to um, cloudify, if you will, these high performance you know, radios, that takes a lot of horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, second thing is the synchronization required, which we've been doing for years with you know, proprietary hardware, to get that to be accurate as we needed to, that's been a challenge as well. But we're now getting to the point where we're, we've been in the labs for about a year now, for a lot of these with our partners, and we're going to start to see cloud native variations of open VRAN come out this year with our partners, you know, with Red Hat. So it is now becoming mainstream, at, you know, this year. Yeah, yeah, pretty incredible. The, the we might say maybe the power performance isn't quite there yet, but it's got really good, right? I mean, on a, on a, on a VRAN, it's <clears throat> well. Part of that is the fact that the um, what we've had to do to actually enable that is to partner with the silicon vendors mm -hmm. who make. Um, the, the NICs for this, and that we can actually accelerate the NIC capabilities from Intel, NVIDIA, Xilinx, using FPGAs and you know, GPUs to get that performance, and then use an open technology to drive that performance from our automated technology. So you can actually drop this thing off, and it automatically gets configured and gets tuned to the capabilities it needs, and the scalability of that ran over those radios we're trying to get it to use less and less compute hardware, because that's the other issue, is it dries up the cost, um, to reduce the amount of hardware you know, that it's using to actually deliver the RAN radios that we're talking about. Okay, so we've got, um, we've got cloud native 5G core, we've got VRAN and, and cloud native RAN in development, we've got edge cloud infrastructure. How does that all kind of come together to make a better service, a great service for customers? Um, well, what, what it really comes together is that now that you've sort of got this same platform distributed to the edge that you can actually deliver the networking capabilities, but now it can actually deliver multi-tenant edge services on top of that for industrial, for automotive, for healthcare, financial services, agriculture, and run those innovative services as a edge service on top of this. That's now bringing a new set of value for the Telco to go sell that as a solution to an enterprise, be it as a multi-tenant one on his own location, the MEC as we call it, mm -hmm. or enterprise edge private 5G on the customer prem for a single tenant. Right? That's the other place that they're all going after to go enable, and it's not so much about the network and the infrastructure, 
This is about improving the yield, the quality, and the safety of those industrial applications in those locations. Right? Network is kind of just what we need to get it there versus what's actually the, the value for the end customer is about how it improves his business and his efficiency. I think, um, in talking about the, the, the value to the customer, how that actually improves life for the customer is a great place to end it. Thanks very much. Well, thank you so much as well.